Hey everyone, and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This is the next episode of our Grand Canyon Park. And at the very beginning, as always, this is the unmodded park we are running at this point. So for all of the fans of the modded park, this is not a modded one. So uh, if you guys are a little bit uh, confused to why certain things don't look the way they used to look in the last couple of videos, this is the reason why. But I, um, I always said I want to keep the balance between both because um, you know especially the console players uh, definitely don't have the chance to play with mods and so I always want to do some inspirational stuff for them as well um, and for those people who simply do not want to play with mods which I can uh, totally understand and um, yeah so this is the reason why today we are going to focus on a small carnivore area which is this time around uh, the video is a bit more straightforward reason for that is uh, for this is that I planned this a little bit ahead um, um, by just looking at some opportunities in this area and I figured you know what it's a the good idea to put like a little area here uh, many many people um, craved for the Deinonychus and also asked uh, for the Dilophosaurus so I thought you know what we're just gonna put them both in this area here in the back um, I've got to say though that we at the end of the video in the real-time part you will see two variants of the animals being in there i'm not really satisfied with the patterns yet i will have to you know dig deeper into the skin variants of those uh, to find the suitable ones for the desert biome here and just get a bit more variation in again i'm i'm not the biggest fan of how the egg system works right now you know having one pattern and then just getting eight eggs with the same pattern i mean it's kind of logic but again for sandbox reasons it's somehow just annoying and i really hope that this is going to be fixed but whatever let's talk quickly about this area so the basic idea is to have a gyrosphere um, tour going through there and um, connecting those two habitats with each other and all the viewing points are a little bit off the habitat itself so having a little bit of a raised uh, position or being a tower in itself already so um, these two you know variants are there also to maximize security and we are just going to say and uh, you know uh, think that these gyrospheres are just so crazily uh, secure that you can go through these habitats nonetheless i think with these smaller um, carnivores it actually would be possible um, speaking about how secure they actually are but um yeah, I think it's always better to view them from a distance. But I mean, whatever, you're just going to a Jurassic Park, you know, with the Mothasaurus and whatever. So I think you potentially wouldn't be afraid to go through a gyrosphere in this habitat, whatever. Yeah, um, as always, the same little complaint here about the plants and the foliage. Um, I think I, I think in this state, I will never get satisfied with it. You can get some cool stuff around, but oh my god, it's so much fiddling around. It's so much crazy uh, trial and error, but whatever. Honestly, though, um, to also focus on the positives, I'm really happy with how this area turned out at the end. Um, the main reason for that is we have some little things in there that I did different this time, like I, you know, focused on the tour, but also we have kind of this li little bit of a light amenity area here in the front. And honestly, this area is kind of cool. It turned out really nice with like a little seating area, making things look like a bit more Jurassic Park-ish, uh, putting some tables and stuff in. And also we are doing kind of a little fake employment Q for the gyrosphere, which I think looks kind of cool. Um, this is something, you know, I haven't really paid any attention to in this game so far, but I think, you know, uh, this whole thing being a bit more of a theme park, it makes sense to kind of have a queue, and this is what we're doing right now over here, just having this little queue line you know going in here and then you even have like a little almost like a desk in which a staff member could greet you with like some information and then you know that being it because potentially that will be a bit more well in fact in Jurassic World in the movie from 2015 um, they are standing in a queue when the park breakdown just happens being the last ones you know that have been led into the gyrospheres in fact but um, there has been a, an actual queue you know and this is what I'm a bit lacking here yeah as always putting rocks every where where they're needed just to make sure that these animals can't escape and this time around i actually made it this time around um, there is no animal threat whatsoever happening so that means things are pretty neat and pretty good and 
uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I really do hope that you guys um, enjoy that as well as as I do, um, making these habitats a bit more open and spacious and whatever. Uh, there are a couple of things I might change along the way. Um, I want to make some more viewing galleries uh, that are a bit more open, so in which we are going to delete the fence and make sure that this open area then is filled in with some boulders and rocks to make the view just a lot more clean. Um, I think that is the idea behind that but yeah other than that this is this is what we did in today's episode and now it is time for your feedback i really need your feedback on what we are going to do next there are a couple of carnivores left uh, for this area i know that many people want the allosaurus and i know that many people also want the carnotaurus or uh, carnotaurus there you go um so please let me know in the comments specifically what kind of carnivores you want to see. I think we we have safely space for two medium-sized ones. Um, that would be it. Or one big one. Uh, that said, I will have a special T-Rex habitat somewhere else. So we don't need to name the T-Rex here. But yeah. Anyways, this should be it from my voice over time. In a couple of seconds, you will be greeted with my real-time self, um, showing you off this in the actual game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it for today. As always, many thanks to all your support. This channel has been rocking crazily recently with all these people now um, enjoying this so much. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. You guys are amazing. Keep it up. There will be so much more coming in the next couple of weeks. I'm really excited. Hope you guys are too. And now, enjoy the real-time part. Thank you and talk to you after the cut. Hey there and welcome to the real-time part of today's build. Yeah, as I said, it's it's been a little bit of a smaller build, not only because it's the smaller carnivores, but also because of the area is not like that gigantic. But I think I'm still quite happy with how it turned out to be. We do have to pay a little more attention to the uh, security environment uh, of this build. So um, as this is in the middle of the carnivores area, uh, we have to maybe put a little bit more emphasis on making that all more secure. You can see there is like a double gate over here. Um, I'm hoping that with the upcoming uh, update plus DLC we will get a couple more opportunities to use these um, you know new pieces. Hopefully they will bring in also some new feel of uh, security vibes and stuff. I don't know what exactly uh, this stuff will look like um, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we have some little things in there that we could potentially utilize. But here you can see um, pretty nice these two exhibits next to each other. So we have on this side the um, and the Lophosaurus one, which is uh, which is basically this little area here, and then we have the Deinonychus on this side. Uh, there's one uh, sleeping over here. You can see this is more in the back here to, uh, well. <sighs> Yeah, I would love to just utilize that area. Just imagine how cool that'd be if, if they could just roam around all the way here as well and then just kind of, I don't know, put some other stuff in here. That would be so cool. So to just see like a couple of square meters of their habitat and the rest is like all the way in the nature. I think that would be that would be really cool. The same goes here for the Delosophos. But um, yeah, I guess we have to work with what we have to work with, right? So let's quickly go into the capture mode. Look at that. Oh my God, look at that. This looks... This looks so cool over here. Look at that. This is this is just all the animals being in one area here and then just like roaming around the, <laughs> the gyrosphere. I'm not sure if, if those people feel so well, but um, you know, um, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so well. <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty cool. Like it's, like, let me just check out this. Um, I'm also, like this is a little complaint, which I hope that they will hopefully fix rather soon. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that when once you hatch some eggs, you always have all the eggs with the same skin. Like this time I was a bit lazy and I will have to hatch some more different skins of the uh, uh, different animals here because otherwise it's just looking too boring. But honestly, this would be so cool to just have some randomized, uh, you know, patterns. Just have like, two eggs that are the pattern that you choose and then have multiple different ones. That would be really cool because otherwise it's just so boring. I don't know, or maybe have like a toggle that enables that. I don't know. It's just like I would love to be a bit more flexible when it comes to to the skins and a bit more quick. I mean, this also looks kind of nice over here. Look, look at that. This area looks also pretty neat. 
Like, I think the whole area looks pretty cool the way it is. I wish, oops, uh, I didn't want to do that. Is it this how, yeah, this is how I put this back into the right perspective. I mean, look at that. I really love how this is in the back, but just some more foliage would really save the day, would look so much better. I mean, that would be really good. Anyways, let's just jump out of this. Um, guests want more drink amenities. You, no, no, just you're not here to drink. You're here to witness dinosaurs. Here, there's a lot of water. Just get a sip from this water. Um, yeah, I'm also wondering how many people we can actually get into this entire thing because, I mean, this map is enormous. Like, look at the size of this entire thing. And I really haven't filled in that much anyways. Like, we do have uh, this big entrance area here with all the hotels and stuff. Then we have the lagoons. We have our um, area, yeah, where all the animals are just constantly escaping um, or herbivores. And then we still have this entire carnivore area here. We have so much to still fill in. It's insane. And I really, really would love to see how many guests we have. Do Actually, can I check how many guests are in the park right now? Okay, so we do have... 1340 from potential 3304 that's not like the biggest number ever but i think we can get there in the future so yeah i'm really excited to see that anyways that's already it from my side today um yeah the upcoming week is going to be a little bit interesting i don't really know exactly how i'm going to go on potentially i will build another habitat in here simply because this is the park where we play without mods anyways and uh, i think this always helps to, you know, go on and do some stuff because all the other modded parks and stuff, I really don't want to bother building too much in right now because really waiting for the update to drop and see what happens there, um, you know, because it always takes a little bit of time until they are, you know, the mods are just kind of... Uh, brought into the newest version of the game so it always takes a bit so yeah focusing on the non-modded uh, areas first but anyways guys thank you so much for your ongoing support as always i hope you guys enjoy the content as always and uh, yeah please stay safe everyone i hope to see you hear you talk to you in the next one until then if you guys enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so that always helps me the most to tell youtube that you like the content i know your lists are all full but that would be a great thing and you would do me a big big favor Anyways, have a good time. Thank you so much as always and goodbye. See you next time. Bye-bye.